Welcome into Xfinity Monday Live here at the View House in Daniel. We're so excited tonight. Back by popular demand, we got Adam Troutman in the house. We got a lot to talk about your season, Adam. But let's just start with big picture. Let's put a bow on this Detroit loss. You guys have watched the tape. What do you take from this one? Um, I mean, we talked about it. Like every every once in a while in the NFL, you know, you're going to get. I, I said it. Uh, I forget when I said it, but like you're going to get got. Like someone's going to yeah. get you okay. at some point. Um, obviously, that was a very very good team we played. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, I mean, there's a lot of stuff we got to clean up, and we still have to get much better, um, especially offensively. I, obviously, I can't really speak for for defense, but I mean, they've been unbelievable the last. What was it? That was the eighth. So seven games yeah. before Detroit. Like they've been unbelievable. So um, we. All the confidence in the world in them from our offensive standpoint, looking at them. Um, but yeah, I mean, we just got to bounce back and everything we want ahead of us. Well, you, you led me right where I want to go. Sean Payton said today, look, you can't lose the same game twice. You mm -hmm. got to flush it. You guys have an incredible ability to compartmentalize, but I'm curious. You guys talk about flushing it. Is it as easy as you make it seem? How do you do it? How do you cut it off and move on? I think it is, honestly. Um, I think the longer you play, the more you realize that. Um, just because you have to go into the next week and you're already looking at the next opponent. Like yeah. today, I'm already looking at the next opponent and it's like, I'm not even, I'm never going to watch the Detroit game again until maybe the end of the season if I want to like look back on yeah. stuff. But uh, you know, I'm not, we're not worried, we're not worried about what just happened. Like you said, you don't to play, you don't, you can't lose two games on Sunday. Like we only play one game. Yeah. So what, what happened happened and, and we're moving past that. But um, you have short memory. Mm -hmm. If you don't have a short memory in the NFL, you're not going to last very long. Especially with where you guys are right now. Fair to say you are do or die, right? Probably mm -hmm. got to win out if you want to yeah. make the playoffs. So how often, though, are, are you scoreboard watching? There's so many teams that you need to maybe lose as well. I mean, do you watch that at all? I mean, yeah, I, I just generally like looking around the league yeah. and seeing who's, you know, who's playing and like just being a fan of football. Yeah. And when you get a Sunday like we did yesterday where yeah. we're not playing you to watch games. Um, but yeah, I mean, you're obviously paying attention to some of it for right. sure. But um, at the end of the day, it's we control our own destiny. Yeah. So even if X team loses it, like if we drop a game, it, then it doesn't matter. So we're really internally focused right now. Well, now it's nice. You got two home games. You guys had three road games in 13 days. That is a tough mm -hmm. slate. What's it going to be like just, just to be back at home for a couple games? Yeah, I mean, it'll be nice um, not having to travel. Obviously, that's a huge, huge thing. Uh, I mean, we only went to, what, East Coast once, but that's always a, a pain, yeah. obviously, with the two-hour difference. Um, but just being back in front of the home crowd and feeding off of their energy and... Um, excited to bring teams back to the altitude as yes. well, which is always a huge advantage in my opinion. I've always felt like altitude is an advantage, but where do you notice it against other teams? Like, are there points in the games? I, I think you can tell, um, like you watch a team on film and how energetic, and then they mm -hmm. come here sometimes, and a lot of teams are kind of just a little more down because you're yeah. breathing a little harder. You don't want to waste your energy yelling as much, right. you know, like there's little things like that. Um, but that's really, that's really where you yeah. see it, and you can wear teams down. For you now, you've been here for however many months. Do you notice it, like, if you're gone for a few road games like that, or you come back, are you used to it by now? Oh, when I come back, I'm used to it. But definitely going other places, like, when we went to Houston, yeah. it was like, I feel like I could run forever. Yeah. So um, it's definitely a huge advantage. I love that. When you look at, I know this Dolphins game, it's annoying we always talk about it, but I, I'm asking in the sense of you guys won the week after. Is mm -hmm. there anything you can take in terms of the leadership in the locker room, the mentality of bouncing back when you know you got to bounce back this Sunday? Yeah, I think it always uh, lights a fire under your under your butt to, like, get going yeah. when you lose a game. And that's why, like, um, like when we played the Bills earlier in the season, Josh Allen is the best record ever after a loss. And it was like, mm -hmm. all right, like, let's be ready. And obviously we ended up winning the game. But um, playing a team, like a, you know, a wounded team, whatever you want to call it, like, yeah. is always a dangerous thing. So um, you obviously want to flip the script. And then obviously everything we have riding on each right. of these games, we have to turn it uh, fast. And we got to forget about not maybe necessarily forget about Saturday, but we have to move past it. I think there is a chance we might get some snow. Might uh, on Sunday. I don't know. I, ha, are, were you looking forward to like some cold weather games in Colorado? Because it, it hasn't been that bad this season. No, no, I am uh, for sure. I actually like playing in the cold. I grew up in Michigan, so I'm kind of used to yeah. it. But uh, yeah, no, I would. I would actually love 
like a snow game. Be great. To be like selfish about it, I would I would absolutely love that. I'm here for it. On Christmas, mm -hmm. it would be, it'd be, yeah, it'd be, be perfect. absolutely perfect. All right, we got a lot more coming up on Xfinity Monday Live with Adam Troutman. So happy to have him in the house tonight. Welcome back into Xfinity Monday Live here at the View House Centennial. So pumped tonight. We got Adam Troutman in the house, your favorite tight end, and of course, Hopefully you'll give us a nice holiday present, Broncos country this year. But uh, we live in the same world. There's no such thing as holidays when, mm -hmm. when you play this sport. What's it like, though, to get to play on Christmas Eve? You like it or not? Uh, I'd rather play on Christmas Eve than Christmas. I played on Christmas my rookie year. Yeah. And it kind of kills the obviously the whole day and yeah. stuff. So like you, you can focus really focus on the week and the game and then you yeah. play Christmas Eve and then you can just like enjoy the Christmas nice. day and everything. Um, but yeah, playing primetime on Christmas Eve is pretty pretty awesome. It's kind of what you dream about, honestly. Um, so yeah, no, I'm excited. I know all the other guys are as well. Whenever you play, do you ever notice like the fans like gearing up, Grinch gear, whatever they might be wearing? Do you notice that stuff or no? Oh yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Like Halloween games and yes. everything. That yeah, it's awesome though. I mean, fans like really dive into it. It's it's, it's a great experience. Well, I feel like it's fitting that you're playing the Patriots on Christmas Eve because the Grinch will be there. And I, I am talking about Bill Belichick, not Adam's words, my words. Um, no, but Sean Payton did say today the one thing about Bill Belichick is he will take away whatever you are best at. He's expecting them to double Cortland Sutton. You know, any great passes that Russ is going to make you in the corner, they're going to take that away. How do you beat a Bill Belichick defense? I mean, you got to be ready for anything and everything like uh, that's arguably if not like that's the greatest coach of all time yeah. um, and he's a defensive minded coach he's not, not he's not the offensive minded coach yeah. so um, I mean yeah he's going to look to take away whatever he thinks that whatever he uh, looks at on film and is like hey this is what these guys do well like mm -hmm. let's take it away and make them win on stuff they're not as well as good at so I mean, yeah, it's really just you're ready for anything and everything, honestly. Does it feel like maybe that is more opportunities for other guys? Like, we know they're going to double court, let's be honest. Yeah, no, I mean, it definitely is. Um, and it's all, I mean, it, it's, it's all 11 guys doing the same thing. It yeah. doesn't matter. Like, you know, they might double court them, but like, and that leaves opportunities for other guys. But if other guys aren't doing, the jo doing their job or yeah. getting open or we're not protecting or we're not getting the ball, like, there's so many things that factor into it. Um, but yeah, I mean, I would anticipate that, yeah. Well, we're all here for another Adam Troutman touchdown. You've had some like great teddies this year, but we I want to talk through two of them. First okay. of all, the one against Cleveland. I, not only did you get your knee in, you have like the whole thigh in, mm -hmm. and then we got the Chargers one. What a play design. You're just yeah. wide open. What's your best touchdown of uh, this year? What do you like? What oh, most? God. Probably the Cleveland one. Yeah. Um, just because of like the difficulty of it, yeah. you know, like the other, like the Chargers one, it, honestly, it was, I didn't do right really here. too much. I just kind of ran off like I was supposed to and I ended up being wide open. They just dropped me. So definitely the, uh, definitely the Cleveland one just because of the difficulty. And then obviously like that kind of put us, um, that kind of put them away for the, for the yeah. rest of the game. Uh, were you surprised that you, how much of you, you stayed in? It almost looked like you were out and then you were all in. Oh, I mean, I didn't think I was in. <laughs> like, I kind of tossed the ball up and I'm like, oh, I'm out. Like, we're going to have to kick a field goal now, you know. Um, and I actually missed the first replay on the scoreboard and uh -huh. I saw Coach Payton put his hands up and I was like, wait. So I looked up and I saw it and I was like, oh my God, I think I'm in. Oh, and then I'm everyone in. started celebrating and it took them like, I mean, it took them like five minutes to finally okay. figure out, which was ridiculous. But, um, yeah, that was that was my favorite one. That what a blast! Bill Belichick can't defend against that. I'll tell you that much. Uh, we're hoping for a lot more of those this weekend. We got much more coming up here on Xfinity Monday Live. But right now, we gotta send it over to Michael Spencer in studio and get caught up on today's news and weather. Let's get things back down to the View House Centennial and Romy Bean. Romy Broncos fans hoping they'll be flying high into the playoffs here in a couple weeks. Certainly, Michael. And you know what? Speaking of Broncos fans, that brings us to the people want to know. People want to know brought to you by Centura Health, official health care partner of the Denver Broncos and champions for the communities. We serve tis the season, so we got a lot of holiday ones. We're actually going to start with one that we had for Pat last week. What is the weirdest gift you've ever received? <laughs> What's the weirdest gift I've ever received? Or the worst. Um, <laughs> honestly, like every year you're I don't want to put it on a blast, but my mom, okay. you know, getting me a flannel shirt every year. And I'm like, mom, I'm never going to wear this. Yes. Like I have 15 of them in my closet from the last 15 years of my life. Um, 
So yeah, you know, the flannel shirts, the gift that keeps on giving, I could go without those for the rest for of my life. life. All right, well, every, <laughs> anyone wants to send Adam a secret Santa, get, make it a flannel shirt, yeah. guys, why don't you? <laughs> uh, that was the people want to know, people want to know, brought to you by Centura Health. All right, coming up on the other side, we were talking a little bit about Cortland, but you know what? You've been known to make a good uh, one-handed snag every once in a while. We'll talk about it when we come back right here on Monday Live. Uh, we've been talking about Court making these crazy one-handed catches, but you know what? I feel like you're being humble over here because we went into the archives and we found out, oh, you can make a couple good one-handed grabs too. Uh, I feel like Deshaun, no? Deshaun, no, you can just <laughs> pop out here and just say, whoop, that's mine. Yep. Uh, what a grab. <laughs> Oh my gosh, I didn't even know. I'm shocked you found these clips. I'm surprised these are even on the internet from Dayton. Anyways, uh, yeah, I mean, I think they all come left-handed, honestly, too. I mean, that's are just you one. A righty? But I'm a righty, but I think something must be wrong with my right hand because it's all on my left. It's like everyone I had in college or during camp or whatever, every single one has been with my left That's hand, a really impressive. Which is weird. I yeah. think we need to see one of those. What a grab. Yeah. When you're out like that, like, did, do you just have it? Or is it there a moment where it's like, oh, got to bring it in real fast? Oh, yeah. No, yeah. for sure. And, the, I mean, the hardest thing is you don't have control. Like, yes. it's a ball's away from your body. You have one hand on it. Like, yeah. someone could literally just tap it, and it's probably going to leave your yeah. hand. Like, so, uh, yeah, the, I mean, if you catch the point of the ball perfectly, like, you're good. But... You know, That's right. well, not when you have that much separation, nobody's bopping it out. Uh, hello, everyone. Thanks for logging on to CBSColorado.com. Time now for a few extra minutes with Broncos tight end Adam Troutman. And uh, we were talking on Monday Live about your catching ability. And people might not know you played quarterback in high school. So what was that transition like? And did you have to work on the hands at all when you became a tight end in college? Yeah, so the hands were probably the thing I worry about the least just because yeah. you're always playing catch and um, like when you're younger and you like you're obviously throwing the ball, someone's gonna throw it back to yeah. you. You gotta catch it. So I'm not saying I have the greatest hands, but it definitely helps. Um, but blocking was by far the hardest transition, just because you go from probably literally never touching a soul to um, blocking, and that's a lot of technique work and a lot of time. I spent so much time on that, mm -hmm. um, and it's something you can always get better at as well. And then like just conceptually, route wise, and Everything where you fit into the passing game, that was probably the easiest thing for me yeah. to understand was the schematic and the mental part of everything. What's the leap like then when you talk about blocking going from college to the NFL mm. when now you're blocking these huge yep. physical guys? Yeah, um, well, especially for me, it's a little different now. If I played at like Ohio State or something, yeah. it would be a big jump, but it's not as big as playing at Dayton. Yeah. Um, the guys I, were blocking, I was blocking was a, were a lot smaller, yeah. to be completely honest. They were much smaller. So... There's definitely like an acclimation period, mm -hmm. but fortunately for me as I played in a pro style offense and my um, offense coordinator is actually our assistant O-line coach here now, oh, wow. which is really cool. That's awesome. So he, he played in the NFL and he's been in the NFL for the last few years. Um, so he helped me a lot. And uh, I mean, you just, it's a reliance on technique. Like you don't weigh more than any of these guys yeah. that you're blocking. So it's all technique and you have to be so honed in on it and understand guys' tendencies and how they play. Um, and literally do anything you can to get any type of advantage because physically you usually do not. I mean, pretty much never you have the advantage, yeah. honestly, as a tight end. It's crazy. So. Oh, man. Not, not an easy job. We don't envy it. Um, Corlin Sutton said re something really interesting after the Detroit game. He said, right now, offensively, we're, we're hovering around a good team and we want to be great. And he said, you know, it's on us to be critical, you know, how we can get seven points instead of three. Can you kind of take me through what do you think about that when he says we're kind of good, looking to be great? Where do you guys need to go to be great? I think, uh, I mean, I think he nailed it, honestly. Like, we have a bunch of the pieces that you need um, to be successful. Um, I think it's just, maybe it's just more time spent in, yeah. the, in the film room, you know? Like, sure, we have our hours that we're in the building, but maybe doing extra, like, guys doing extra and spending time. And I know guys do that, but... Um, you know, maybe it's just like a little more attention to detail. Like you can always be better in anything that you do. So, uh, yeah, I mean, we, we got to figure some stuff out because um, we've been probably two out of the last three games. We've we've stalled pretty hard, mm -hmm. Houston in this game. So, uh, yeah, I mean, just it's a new focus. It's a new defense. It's a new scheme we're going to go against. So, um, 
yeah, just, just moving on and focusing on that. You get to this point on the season, and everybody's got enough tape on everybody. Uh, but Sean Payton brought it up. The Lions did some things different defensively that he mm -hmm. now expects teams to, to do down the stretch. So yep. what can you take? What can you learn from that to make sure you know teams are going to maybe come out with you a little bit of what you know Aaron Glenn did over there? Yeah, I think you can. Uh, so it goes back to, like, there's some teams that certain teams play that are super, maybe say like us, like we're run heavy, mm -hmm. right? Well, maybe you watch the Baltimores. Maybe you watch the Chicago mm -hmm. spend more times on those teams that, um, you know, run the ball more so you can see what they're getting thrown at them yeah. um, and give you a better idea as opposed to the, you know, more generic offenses. Not, I don't know how to say it, but like generic, like pro style, normal offenses. Like those are different because they have running quarterbacks. But, right. um, and just like, the, I mean, the coaches, they're going to be ready for it. I can promise you that. Like they're, they're going to be like, all right, well, if we start to get this, because now we've seen a team do it, mm -hmm. we will have answers for it. Mm -hmm. um, so, yeah, I mean, having answers and just expecting anything and everything and just like, I mean, that's what you got to expect when you play the greatest coach yeah. of all time. One thing about you guys this season, and we know it's been a roller coaster of a season, but you've, really, you've been so even keeled. I've never mm -hmm. sensed any panic from anybody. Who does that come from? Is that coaches? Is that player leadership? Who does that come from? I mean... Honestly, I think it starts. I thought. I think. It, I thought it started with Coach Payton. Yeah. I mean, we're one in. We're zero and three. We just got had the worst. You know, probably the worst loss in maybe Broncos yeah. history. Honestly, like I haven't yeah. been here. I don't know, but I'm, I would assume so. You know, we got to a point where we're one in five, and it's like, hey, it's make or break. We got to. Mm -hmm. We got to roll. And uh, he was always so calm. And coming into the team meetings, you know, he's not. He's not sitting up there. He's. I mean, he's coached for a long time. He's one of the better coaches in NFL history. Yeah. And. You know, he comes in and he's got this like mantra and like this calmness about him where like we all feel it, mm -hmm. you know, so and it was I mean, we were so close in so many of those games. Miami obviously was not close, but we were close one score pretty much every game. Yeah. The Jets was 10 points, but I mean, we had the ball with two minutes left down three. So we're, we were close and we knew we were close mm -hmm. and we know that the cult that we knew that, you know, it takes time for a culture to change. And that's, you know, we, we trusted in it. Mm -hmm. And now we're sitting here seven, seven, we're six, two in the last eight. And we have a chance to do exactly what we set out to accomplish. It's been so cool watching this culture change. It's been incredible, actually, to watch. Now you're at a point where, realistically, you've got to win out. We know that. Mm -hmm. But like you said, you get to control your own destiny. That's great. How do you not, how do you keep from pressing, though? Because it is. It's do or die. Yeah, I mean, everyone in the back of their head, like, you're thinking, like, you want to make the playoffs. This yeah. city will go absolutely insane. Yes. Like, I, I know that because... Guys talk about it all the time. Like, they haven't been in the playoffs since, what, the Super Bowl year? Yeah. So, I know, like, we want to do it for the city, for them to get into it and, like, believe, fully, fully put their belief and trust in us again. But um, to be completely honest, we are also – it's a one-week-at-a-time thing. If you look too far ahead, someone can catch you. And this is a team that can catch you. I don't care that they're 3 and – or I don't even know what they are now, 3 and 11, yeah. th whatever it is. Um, but they can catch you. They're one of the better coach teams in the NFL just because they have Bill Belichick right. at the helm. So, um, I mean, yeah, that's what we're focused on, and it's going to be a week-to-week -week thing from here on out. It's going to be one heck of a showdown. Sean Payton versus Bill Belichick. We love to see it, and we can't wait. We can't wait for this playoff drought to end, Adam. We've been waiting a <laughs> long time. Uh, such a treat having you on tonight, my friend. Thank you so much for joining us. We really appreciate it. Yeah, thanks for having me. And don't forget, Christmas Eve, Broncos play, and hopefully they'll have a nice present for you under the tree, Broncos country.